chimps? This is going too far. Equal rights here, at least. Now notice, just notice, I'll show you how they control us by controlling our expectation levels. Once our expectation levels are down, ah, crooked politicians, pox on both their houses, I got better things to do with my private life. Exactly what they want you to say. When you think politics is a dirty word, why are we surprised when we get dirty politics? Actually, it's a beautiful word if you go back to its derivation. And so here's what we do on the cable. We give monopoly rights. We don't require a checkoff in our bill where we can form a cable users action group to begin monitoring prices, service, gouging, programming, not enough equipment for cable access channels locally, all kinds of things. But here's what we should ask. How come we, we have no labor channel? We have no consumer channel. We have no channel for millions of st students, college, community college students. We have no channel for uh, accountants. They have a lot to answer for. We have no channel for people who view themselves as small taxpayers and are sick of paying the freight for the big freeloaders. We, we should have a channel for all kinds of groups. We've got 650 channels, we give it all away with nothing by way of reciprocity. What's the doctrine of reciprocity, for heaven's sake? Why don't we give, we give away all kinds of R&D that created the semiconductor industry, Silicon Valley, aerospace, half of the pharmaceutical industry, the nanotechnology, all taxpayer basic research, the genetic engineering, out of National Institutes of Health over the years. What are we getting for? Other than staggering drug prices? Out of the stupid Facebook accounts where they use our, our, our personal information free and don't pay for it? Billions of, of idiotic apps? You got all this modern technology, you still have people in horrible poverty. Horrible hunger. 15 million children go hungry at night. Look at the hovels that people live in. Look at their shattered pensions by the Wall Street criminality, which shattered trillions of dollars of pensions, took away 9 million jobs in 2008-9, and then went to the taxpayer for a bailout as they jumped ship with golden handshakes. The big guys. None of them went to jail. None of them were prosecuted. You don't think that's a left-right position? Tough criminal, corporate criminal laws would be passed in Congress. Tough penalties, whole new penitentiaries created with good food because they demand it. <laughs> <laughs> Defend and extend civil liberties. This is a real left front. The Patriot Act is an atrocity. It allows the government to search your home or apartment and not tell you for 72 hours. It allows the government without probable cause to get into your medical financial information, your library takeouts and loans, etc. You don't think that's a 90% thing? Left, right, libertarian, progressive, liberal, conservative? Of course it is. Expand civic skills and experience among students in elementary and high school. Let them learn how to defend themselves from the electronic child molesters and the marketeers. Let them learn how to choose important and good food and good drink and avoid going overweight and obese and diabetic at a young age, which is lethal, and hypertension. You think conservative families don't know that these marketeers on TV and social media selling violent programs to these kids, letting them engage in the mayhem, tearing apart limbs? You don't think they are resenting these corporations for bypassing and undermining parental authority day after day over their own six, seven, eight, yeah. nine, ten year olds. Left, right. Get rid of corporate personhood. Get rid of this eminent domain where you take small private property and give it to the big guys for development. That's a left, right issue. Get tough on uh, uh, empowering uh, shareholders, mutual funds, pension funds. They own the majority of shares of the big corporations. They have no power. They don't control what they own. The bosses control. And they've rigged the SEC and other agencies to strip us of our power of ownership. These are not capitalists. Capitalists observe owners having some control over what they own. These are corporate capitalists building a corporate state 
which Franklin Down Roosevelt called the 1938 message to Congress, fascism. We have clinical fascism in this country. Uh, here's another. Rethink the war on drugs, criminal justice reform. Huge now left right is passing bills in juvenile justice in 15 legislatures now. These huge penalties for a little hard drug possession. Really update the real weapons of mass destruction uh, threat and face it. And you know what it is? It's viruses and bacteria out of control worldwide. And we have minuscule budgets. The whole boondoggle missile defense system every year sucks you up nine to ten billion dollars and they've been at it since Reagan administration. And they can't show that it works. It can't work. They can't decoy. They can't fight any decoy of an intercontinental ballistic mission. The, the main organization of physicists over 15 years ago condemned it. These are the physicists who often consult with the Pentagon. So they're going 9 to 10 billion. The Center for Disease Control budget, 6 billion. We can have epidemics either generated here or abroad mutating and take millions of lives. What are we doing building $13 billion a, a aircraft carrier, more nuclear subs. We don't need them. We can blow up the world now in TNT equivalents 300 times and make the rubble bounce. But it's big business for the military industrial complex. And then the other one is prior, 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 prioritize the protection of the environment. Here's another misconception. You know all these right-wing people around the country you know, they listen to Rush Limbaugh, they believe Sean Hannity. I mean, you know, what, what are they, living in an illusion here? Uh, of course they're not going to support environmental protection uh, when it's at an abstract level. Pointy-headed bureaucrats telling you uh, how to run your affairs. Then you say, do you have kids? Yeah. Do you want them to breathe dirty air? Huh? Eat unsafe food? Uh, have dangerous medicines. Uh, that's good. Why don't you sign on the dotted line? We'll give you a bonus for being a juvenile's delinquent above the age of 21. <laughs> when you come down the abstraction ladder, a lot of the ideology disappears. When you come down where people, whether they label themselves conservative or liberal, where they live, work, and raise their families, they have to face reality. They're not facing Trumpism, Limbaughism, or all the other illusions of control that are woven about, around them without any rebuttal by our side because we've lost radio, talk radio, among other media. Day after day, they're getting this stuff pumped into them, utilizing fundamental, sometimes innocent prejudices, but giving them fangs to develop terrible situations against their own interests, like the poor people in Appalachia now are now supporting Republicans. Republicans go and they really spear them in Washington. Because the Democrats have abandoned for years the economic issues for the cultural issues because they're dialing for the same commercial dollars as the Republicans. Imagine the Democrat Party, year after year, is unable to defend our country against the worst Republican Party in history based on the votes they pushed through the House of Representatives which the Democrats do not collect and use against them in the election. Anti-children, anti-woman, pro-Wall Street, pro-more Pentagon waste, pro-more corporate loopholes, tax loopholes for corporations, anti-food safety. I mean, it's like a, a rogue gallery of madness, and they don't use it. They don't want to upset the corporations that are feeding the Democrat coffee. And so here we have Inability. You imagine what Truman and FDR would have done to today's brand, the Republican Party? <laughs> all right, so this book is all about this. This book is no nonsense. It shows that 1% or less of active involved advocates spread around the country have been responsible for all the major transformations in our country, other than the wars. Civil rights, abolition, slavery, civil liberties, women's, uh, women's right to vote, uh, union rights, uh, the farmer, progressive 
eruption in the late 19th century, regulating the banks and the railroads. All of these are, have been spearheaded a lot by little third parties never won an election, and by less than 1% of the people giving a couple of hundred hours a year networked uh, on their cause. So why are we so pessimistic? Why, why don't we say, good heavens, we have the 1% Wall Street. How about our 1%? As long as we f reflect public sentiment, as Abraham Lincoln advised us, we win. When we reflect left-right, we win the landslide. It's an unstoppable. And today, and the book is full of examples, where even a few dozen people got all kinds of hazardous medicines off, uh, off the market. They broke through the power of the drug companies. Or uh, a paraplegic student from Oberlin went to work with us, Ralph Hodgkins, broke the monopoly on crummy wheelchair sales out of London, England, and got production here with a few of his colleagues over the last 30 years, and built and did not patent brand new improvements in wheelchair design to be resilient, not break down, inexpensive, and can maneuver people over uneven surface. And he goes all over the world, third world, teaching people, poor people, how to build their own wheelchairs with local materials, and then they begin to teach him refinements on the wheelchair. These wheelchairs can do almost anything but fly. You cannot believe these wheelchairs. He was tied in with San Francisco State for many years before the, head, the new head decided he wanted to emphasize athletics and he shoot him out of there to Berkeley. Ralph Hodgkins. Lois Gibbs out of Niagara Falls. She's, you know, Love Canal, that, all that the toxic waste under their homes, the housing project. She became a massive leader of, uh, for a grassroots effort right at the neighborhood level against toxics all over the country, winning battle after battle. She never had any experience. You know what she had? She had determination. She had concentration. She had curiosity. Just what is needed attached to a purpose in life that she thought she could justify because of the, the problems with her children and other children and this covered up toxic waste dump, hooker chemical and other chemicals abandoned without telling the homeowners after the developers covered it up is seeping you know, into the cellars and so on. So that, this book has a lot of examples. Here's what I'd like you to do. The last thing I want you to do is to leave this wonderful bookstore by a wonderful poet and wonderful staff and say to each other, wasn't that an interesting presentation? <laughs> we don't have time for just interesting presentations. The time is for action. The sovereignty is in our hands. We have the power, we've got to give it a cutting edge, organized power through the electoral, through the civic. And just realize this, that the Congress is full of senators represented who are afraid of the people. Uh, and they don't want the people to wake up enough to organize. They're pretty shocked by how many are supporting Trump. They didn't understand the simmering resentment that his rhetoric inflamed. Uh, they're still afraid of the people. I can assure you of that. Shall we mimic Trump? The members of Congress are afraid of the people. Believe me, okay? <laughs> I can assure you of that. All right? Keep saying, believe me, believe me. One time my mother wrote a column for the New York Times. She said, you know, I call up people and they keep saying, believe me. Uh, you know, all these believability uh, phrases that people add on to be honest with you, to be trust, you know. And she said, why do they have to say that if they're telling the truth? <laughs> and so Gingrich sets all-time record for saying, uh, for his credibility. It's because he lies so much. And Trump was, you know, the triumph. He's the triumph, the dog, you know. <laughs> He's a failed gambling czar and a corporate welfare king who's cheated almost everyone categorically he's met, his consumers, workers, creditors, suppliers, taxpayers, cheated on his matrimony, bragged about it, and look where he's come, look and see. It's the abandonment of the Democratic Party. Uh, they would, it should be 
easily, you know, taking care of that uh, reptilian challenge. <laughs> so this, this has a lot of things in it. I'd like you to buy six at a time. <laughs> so you have neighborhood meetings on it, and the key pivot is the Congress Watchdog Group. With a letterhead, you start with 50, 100 people, you introduce yourself to two senators represented, you say, what you're going to do is you're going to get more support, and you're going to summon them to town meetings here in the Bay Area, and you're not going to say, well, Nancy Pelosi's a liberal. I mean, she struck out in 2010, 12, 14, she's going to strike out again, and they keep re-electing her. They don't even know the rules of baseball, because she's a nice person, and she goes around raising money for candidates all over the country. In the meantime, they are dominated by the worst, most craven, vicious, ignorant Republican operatives in, in the party history since 1854. Cool. See, so you don't leave anybody out. And you summon them to a town meeting, and just to make it easy, I've got a list. I have written up a formal summons. And, and, and Matt Gonzalez and others can attune it to the Bay Area. It's whereas, whereas, whereas. You made a mess of things, Congress. You made a mess of things. Now here for we summon you to a town meeting at a place of public convenience. We're sending you our materials so you can do your homework and not just smile and nod on us and walk out the door after you hear uh, what we have, what we're demanding. We even have uh, drafted bills. Uh, it's all there. All you got to do is put your finger to the wind and say, you know, this is the right thing to do. I might get less money from Walmart and J.P. Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo. It's the right thing to do because my future depends on it. And I don't want them on my back. The most powerful lobbies, they have three things. They put money in the, in the coffers. In personam lobbying on Capitol Hill and back home, like I said, you think APAC has demonstrations? Are you kidding? You think the NRA has marches? They just work on 535. And and you talk to people on Capitol Hill and privately, they say, I, re I don't re I don't really like APAC's demands, but I'm afraid to say it publicly. I say, why? He said, because. I just want to get them off my back. I don't have the time. My staff doesn't have the time. So I say yes to them. I say yes to the NRA on background checks and so on. So this distills it all and has a lot of examples and some funny things, actually. I'm not placing much reliance on humor as a conveyor belt. Uh, it just relieves the, the stress once in a while. <laughs> and let me end on this note. Sometimes on Saturday afternoon, I turn on the network programs. Uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. I want to see how our property is being used. Now, there's a lot going on in America on Saturday afternoon. There's a lot of good civic breakthroughs, all kinds of innovative things in school, in the arts, and in politics, and uh, how we're solving problems here, but it isn't diffused over there. We can learn from one another. Seattle was pretty early in dealing with uh, infections from blood transfusions years ago. Well, how did they do it? Uh, it's a problem everywhere, so we learn from one another. Some, some has good bicycle paths in Portland. Okay. Here's what I found on an average Saturday, okay? I have to flick, I do quick to get it. Here it is. Our property was used free by NBC, Fox, ABC, CBS, and over-the-air networks. What did I see on TV this Saturday afternoon? Puppy Cat, Tree Flu Tom, Astro Blast, The Chica Show. World of Adventure, sports, active sports, track and field championships, infomercials, golf, U.S. Senior Open, five hours on Fox, must be very exciting, infomercials, two and a half hours on ABC of infomercials, you know, kitchen, equipment, real sharp knives, and squeezers, uh, you buy them all and you get another squeezer. Uh, the PGS Tour Golf, uh, 
the insider, and into the wild and exploration. That's a typical Saturday afternoon on TVA, on TV USA. Now, there isn't anybody here, I can guarantee you, believe me, okay, that watches Saturday afternoon network TV. I said, right? So why do they do it? Because they have demographics that is cheap, first of all, and they have cheap advertising relative to high ratings, and they make a goal of it. So they have people who want to watch senior golf, and they have exact type of products to sell older people who watch senior golf. You know, it's micro data and all that, data mining. So raise our expectation levels, start the letterhead, start it with 10, 20, 30. It's a lot of fun. Justice is joyful, believe me, it's better than a box of chocolates. <laughs> and once you begin, and I'm saying you because you're mostly active, you wouldn't be here. But once people begin to stop saying, I'm a nobody, I don't count, I don't matter, they're not going to listen to me, the big boy.